had a YouTube channel in Brazil with, with, where I used to explain and share all my my steroids to everybody. When I usually uh, I used used to share all my steroids athletes. So for those who knows a little bit of steroids, I used to train with Evan Santapani, uh, Kai Green, Phil Heath, uh, Marco Rivera. De La Rosa, Vitor Martinez. So all these guys that I mentioned, they're huge names in bodybuilder, and they are uh, my training partners. So I just I didn't have just the experience of training with them as a training partners with the same coach at the same time in the gym, but also live the life with them. And steroids, all right, guys, and we're back getting swole as a grappler by Gordon Ryan. A lot of people have been saying that I am biased against Gordon and that I attack him. This is simply not true. I make fun of everyone equally. It just so happens he is easier to make fun of than everyone else because he does it to himself. No one is above being made fun of. If my friends started touching kids and I pointed it out and said, hey my guy, that's not cool, that does not mean I'm biased or attacking him, or let's say he had a job interview and before it I saw that he had shit on his forehead, I would point it out, because I am a good friend. That doesn't mean I hate him, or that he's not rich or successful in Jiu Jitsu just means he's human and sometimes you think something's a good idea, sounds cool or looks cool in your head, but you're really just inhaling bleach fumes. Just inhaling the bleach fumes for like an hour straight. I say that with love. Wanker. Anyways, now that's out of the way, so we have the first 10-20 minutes or something like that with Gordon's girlfriend Natalia Santoro, basically saying that she doesn't have any formal education, but she has a background in bodybuilding, so it's pretty much the same thing. When people ask to me what is my background or what is my degrees or my college, I do not have one, and I know that this is, matters a lot for people, but I do have something that is completely priceless, which is experience, and things that I, don't, I know for a fact that you never will find in any uh, educational book, any encyclopedia, any, any, anywhere, when you live the real struggle, the real life of a, a professional athlete. She also says that the things she shows in the instructional are priceless and you can't find them anywhere. It's not in any encyclopedia, not in any books. It's very special. And then later on she says that the stuff in the instructional is nothing special it's just steroids, I mean hard work. I mean yes it's hard work but also steroids. It seems as though the whole first half of this instructional is her trying to tiptoe around or dispel any possible objections to her credibility and any suspicious hormonal optimization whilst using quite strange analogies. There was a strange porn analogy to validate her knowledge early on when she's going through all the various supplements saying, this is good you know I don't know why and I don't know what's in it, but you know you do your own research, like you know how you research porn. Multivitamin. Everybody should take multivitamin. I, don't, I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying that you should have to, have to take those things. But if, again, if you walk into a CVS pharmacy, a, a child can go and grab a multivitamin. So you just have to have a little bit of curiosity with things that you, you need, that your body will need, and just search a little bit. Just like everybody, when you're curious about something, you search, right? You want to go to travel to some new place, like, oh, let me search, let me see what, what can I do in this place. Or even more, being super honest, when you, when you know, porn site, you search whatever you like to see, like two girls together, two blondies, you search. When you're curious about something, you go and you search. So I'm not gonna be here talking about which each supplement does to your body. I'm gonna just mention what we use, and I'm gonna also put those, uh, and how we did in a diet, which, which time we take in the day. And for those who more, are more interesting to know why they do and why they work, just search. Use Google, you search, you find out, okay? Interesting. Now, if you don't know who Natalia Santoro is, she's Gordon's girlfriend. She's the Yuki in all of his instructionals, shares the same affinity for ethnically inconsistent forearm tattoos, and is from Brazil, a place where they're known for being natty. Now I don't want to make fun of him too much, but you can find this stuff anywhere on the internet, it's on YouTube for free, it's nothing special it's just the conjugate method, there are many resources on the conjugate method, I'll leave a link in the description below, but it's basically just high reps, somewhere around 4 sets of 20 and then Gordon does a drop set at the end and mixed in with the old school bodybuilding diet and steroids to optimize the best gut dysfunction. Yes these workouts are great, but these are hard workouts and combine that with training Jiu Jitsu twice a day you're probably gonna need steroids to not be catabolic and to become swole, as he says, or you might fluctuate in body composition or attain high blood pressure trying to keep the calories up. I don't have a problem with him doing steroids but I don't think this instructional is being 100% transparent, it's a little bit liver king-esque. 
No, it's not the trash talking. I think Gordon's trash talking is quite cute. I did a review of his trash talking in another video a while back, which I will be re-uploading soon so keep an eye out for that one. He just can't seem to quite figure it out. He says he doesn't care about the trolls but then he goes on JRE and he tells everyone how much he doesn't care about how they commented on his widow's peak when no one on the podcast ever even mentioned it until he brought it up. Seemed like he prepared to say that, to tell the world how much he doesn't care about something no one mentioned. So you don't care about it, eh? But you care about it enough to bring it up, eh? Means you were thinking about it, eh? That also goes for the chicken leg troll comments where he gets very defensive saying, I keep him small on purpose. You're also stupid. Okay, Gordon, whatever you say, mate. When they are trolling nonsensically, you must respond nonsensically. In responding logically, you've now just given the trolls exactly what they want. Now it doesn't matter what you say, all they have to say back is whatever chicken legs and you're completely shut down because now they know you're sensitive about it. Another example is when the trolls were making fun of him because he was buying a Miata and he was preemptively defending himself as he's buying it saying, oh people say it's a hairdresser's car, but you idiots I have this car, I have this other car and I have this truck, huffing and puffing. Okay Gordon we get it, you have all the manly cars as well to make up for the feminine one. Geez Gordon it's a Miata, if you like it don't worry about them, just like it. It's a bit gay but who cares, don't care so much about what people think, just live your life. If he ever came out with a trash talking instructional it would be like if Dylan Dennis came out with a back escape instructional. Albeit he wins more than Dennis, but he's doing the exact same thing Dylan Dennis is doing, supposedly playing a persona, but not understanding how to play the persona, saying it's for the sport, saying that they don't care and that it's all for fun, but really just using the persona as an excuse to cover up something embarrassing about their own personalities. Uncle Chael was one of the few that got it, he was playing a persona, exaggerating theatrics comedically, often responding nonsensically, which shows how unemotionally reactive and invested he is. Some people have it, and some people don't. The more this younger generation of athletes try to be Connor post Connor, the more it seems they are falling out of touch with the art of trash talking. It's like if Dylan Dennis went, yeah, I meant to get choked out by that security guard on purpose, I'm the heel, I'm playing the bad guy, duh it's all marketing. Do you're also stupid, when it's like nah, I'm pretty sure you didn't mean for that to happen Dylan. But anyways the conjugate method's a great method, but without steroids I don't think you'll be able to get the same kind of mileage out of it. This is pretty much Natalia's instructional, there's a few nice workouts with some various grips but not anything special. Some parts seem very rushed, like the stretching segment where they even forget halfway through what stretches they do. When it's something Gordon attributes his flexibility to, but at the same time says he's not flexible and forgets what stretches he does halfway through, seeming like this stretching routine is not something they do that often but they just had to fill in the time. Oh and not to mention there are a lot of typos in this as well. As far as the diet goes, it's just the old school bodybuilding diet where you theoretically boost your metabolism by stuffing your face every 2 seconds to stay slim but also keep the weight on. He does this with a high protein low fat which ironically a low fat diet has been said to drop testosterone so with the steroids becomes a hilarious double negative. A lot of his trash talking is based around low testosterone, low test this, low test that, and it seems it's something he places a lot of his own value on as a man. So he puts himself in a precarious position where he needs to do the steroids to feel manly but at the cost of his health. So much so that he even likes his girlfriend to have high testosterone. You can see how this could easily spiral his health issues. If his girlfriend adopts more masculine features, he has to do more steroids to out-test her, creating an infinite insecurity feedback loop. Especially when she's the one causing the gut issues when she's rearranging his guts. But it's not gay because she's of high testosterone, so when she's inside of him it's double the testosterone, meaning he's double the heterosexual man. But anyways, I digress. This diet is the old method to hypothetically stay anabolic, but this has been said to make you more insulin resistant, so you can't even absorb the food that you put in and it may be responsible for some of the gut dysfunction which Gordon has admitted to having both, where he had gut problems and couldn't even absorb the food anyway. With all the fasting information circulating through the martial arts space, I thought Joe would be able to lead Gordon on a healthier path on Gordon's first appearance on JRE, but unfortunately Gordon responded that he needed to keep the weight on but ironically couldn't even absorb the food he ate. Hubermensch had mentioned previously that the use of steroids essentially raises the risk of mortality as your life expectancy goes down as it's basically a second puberty, and your body isn't really designed for that amount of rapid change more than once in your lifetime, especially when you are larger than you should be. 
Puberty is a phase where teens go through a lot of confusion about their place in the world, their identity, their self-worth, especially as a male. Going through all those hormonal changes the personality swings are up and down, you're gonna be posting 1,000 stories. But that ability to denigrate and to gossip and to destroy reputation is much more characteristic of the female antisocial types. Emotions are fickle, but the one saving grace though, is that they grow out of it. But not when they pharmacologically do it again. When downplaying accomplishments with steroid accusations it may challenge his identity and cause this overreaction of emotions. This is not a persona for the sake of entertainment. This is one instance where the character breaks and the heel persona fades, this is not fun anymore, this is where he feels he has to defend himself. As the younger ages get into jiu-jitsu and look up to Gordon Ryan, there's going to be more people seeing these typos in the instructional and take them as gospel, when someone comes around and says, um I'm not sure that they're dumbbell shrugs, I feel like they're barbell. You idiot. You know who this is? This is Gordon Ryan saying this. He's jacked. He's a three-time ADCC champion. You low test idiot. Or, hey man I heard Hubermensch saying these are good protocols for a healthy gut, which by the way have neurons to regulate things like mood. The gut microbiome is very complex and might be another cause of Gordon's personality swings. You idiot. Hubermensch is not as jacked as Gordon Ryan. Gordon's rich and he can break Hubermensch's arm. More often than not I've seen MMA guys to be a bit more humble than Jiu-Jitsu guys. As Craig put it, MMA guys are risking their brain cells, where in Jiu-Jitsu it's just their egos on the line. The Jiu-Jitsu guys tend to live more in the hypotheticals to protect their egos. You would have died. You would have died in my buggy choke. I got hit a couple days ago. I did real fighting for this Jiu-Jitsu, I would have slammed him on the bricks. You're the one that closed the distance. I would have slammed him on the bricks. <laughs> I would have bounced your head off the canvas except this bricks. Grass. Come on, a buggy choke from here? Choke. Under that? Film it, film it. Watch. I would have let him close the distance. On the grass or on the beach. I thought he didn't stand up only. In a real fight this would happen, in a real fight that would happen. These hypotheticals tend to overinflate when you're not faced with your own mortality or subjected to the infinite amount of variables in a quote-unquote real fight on a regular basis. Yes a slam could knock you out, but sometimes it makes the submission tighter and sometimes it knocks both of you out. Something that I discovered too during my career is being the strongest man in the world. That's my, that was my dream when I was young. That's why I did UFC. I wanted to be the stronger man in the world. And I realized over the years this, it did not exist. You cannot be the stronger man in the world. This is an illusion. I love the younger guy. They say, oh, I'm the badass man. No, you're not, man. It doesn't exist. You would be strong. You would be a better fighter than this guy at that particular day, at that particular location, at that particular moment. Maybe in an hour, if the fight would occur an hour later, an hour before, or maybe in a different place where the, the altitude is higher or lower, or a different scenario, different environment, you will lose that fight. It's always a question of odds, you know what I mean? Mm. So being the stronger man in the world, it does, its style makes fight. Maybe we're three guys. I beat you, you beat him, he beat me. Who's the, who's the best guy? There's no best guy. Right, that's MMA math, right? Everybody it, it, always it is, it, it is like this. That's that. the way to yeah. see it. So there is no stronger man in the world. You can't. You say, oh, I'm the baddest man on the planet because I'm champion. It's like the belt thing is, is an illusion, the belt thing. The belt thing is a symbol, but it, it's an illusion. It doesn't exist. You're not the stronger man in the world. Mm. I know a lot of people will disagree with me, but is it is what it is. That's, if you ask most experienced fighter, most people will think the same way because we realize at one point, like when we're young because of our confidence or maybe our, the cockiness or our confidence, after it, it, not that it fades, but we, we, we see, we have more experience, knowledge. We realize it's all, it's all BS, it's not true. Obviously the jujitsu guy is light years above the street fighting McDojo. But just because you've come to realize how much you didn't know about fighting when you started jujitsu, that doesn't mean you're enlightened enough to know everything about a fight. Even trained MMA fighters are far from knowing every particular variable and every particular scenario situation altercation. Yeah, but they're stupid, unlike me I know Japanese. We train we practice for fun and health and competition, yes your odds in a fight are vastly greater in certain circumstances, but you don't know how much the narrative of a fight changes even from the smallest detail, like if there's a cage, how small the gloves are, if there's rounds, if there's a shirt, if they're greased, etc. These seemingly tiny insignificant details have such a drastic change to the infinite variables of a fight. So much so that I don't believe it warrants anyone to walk around thinking that they can handle any situation, especially when their primary game is a seated half butterfly, it's kinda delusional. Fair enough if you're promoting a fight, but this is Jiu Jitsu. 
Another example is something as small and insignificant as shorts with pockets on them. If you've trained in jiu-jitsu for a while, you've probably experienced at one point, your fingers or toes getting caught in someone's pants or a rash guard, immobilizing your appendage for that split second and the your opponent headbutts you in the eye. Now you're disorientated, now your eyes compromise and you can't see. All from a pair of pants. Pant pockets. That's just one example of one variable in the infinite sea of many variables. Yeah, but you think that will stop me, I shall persevere, I will open that eye and it shall begin to see red, and then I would kill that guy because I practice jiu-jitsu. In MMA the better guy doesn't always win. For those who have been in the game long enough know that although you can greatly calculate the probable odds in your favor, there are still too many variables in a real fight to manage heuristically. You might be a better fighter than someone but you wake up that day with steaming hot diarrhea or a fly flies right into your eyeball right before you throw a punch. Does that mean your technique wasn't good enough? You should have anticipated that? Drilled for that? The fly in the eye drill? Living a hormone imbalanced life keeps you from being objective. That goes for both playing with estrogen and playing with testosterone. You might begin to sound just like the liberals that Gordon makes fun of. The same ways liberals respond, packaged, automatic, cookie cutter responses like, it's misogynistic, it's racist, it's homophobic, etc. The same thing can be on the opposite. Anytime anyone brings up steroids, you're just a hater, you're jealous, you're low test, etc. The exact same cookie cutter catchphrases. This is not an actual discussion. Let's say these deranged liberals come to their senses after the pandemic, right after all the vax, the lockdown, mental health issues, etc. and by some small chance of a miracle they decide to get healthy, they learn the errors of their ways and finally stop being a victim, put down the cake and do some push-ups. They follow the letting influences in the health space, they start jiu-jitsu for health, and they go further down the rabbit hole and they see that everyone's not as healthy as they say they are, everyone's messed up with hormonal issues, health issues and gut problems. Yes, jiu-jitsu is healthy for you physically and mentally, but that doesn't mean that everyone that practices jiu-jitsu is healthy physically and mentally. In today's world, the one saving grace should be this space. Jiu-jitsu is the one sacred temple in this digital apocalypse, where people are interacting with each other physically, where people are listening to people like Huber Mensch, Rhonda Patrick, Joe Rogan, David Sinclair. Other influencers only push the health aspect, when they're trying to sell something, trying to sell tickets, put more bums in seats at ADCC, etc. It's only when it's good for them they say it's so good for your health and your mentality, when you can monetize the good faith of these people trying to get their life on track for the better. They pay influencers for very simple and basic workout plans, IBS inducing nutritional advice, incomplete supplemental advice that lead to insecurities about their manhood if they don't do steroids, whilst at the same time people like Hubermensch give out the actual valuable information for free. Just like Liver King, the hardest ones to argue with are the people that know a little bit, because they take that little bit and extrapolate that into, now I know everything. Yes a little bit of what Liver King is saying is true, you should get out in the sun, you should exercise, but he takes that little bit of truth to rope people in and he tries to monetize their faith by saying, oh now if you want to get healthy now you need this protein and you need my supplements etc. Hard work, yes, but also steroids. Just like Liver King, using a little bit of the truth to monetize. Where Gordon would use the word hater similarly to how Liver King dodges the PED questions, using his prepackaged acronym response, I am on PEDs, I prioritize, execute and dominate. An automatic response to the steroid accusations allows him to comfortably lie straight to people's faces. In a time where there's so much misinformation, at the very least in these instructionals say disclaimer these exercises are very beneficial, but you might not get the same results because I'm on performance enhancing steroids. As opposed to dancing around it with pubescent responses like, everyone else is on it, you're just a low test hater, it's not in the rule books, I know you are but what am I, it does sound a lot like someone's going through puberty for a second time doesn't it? Being a man is not just testosterone, there are 70 year old army veterans with low testosterone that are still more of a man than the bleached haired men of today, intelligence, wisdom, nobility, honor and virtue, are all qualities absent in today's men, a little bit of open minded intelligence may have prevented someone's kaka poo tummy ache. The definition of woman was ruined by third wave feminism and now the definition of man has been ruined by boys playing with hormones. A lot of people on steroids I know have many of the same symptoms, such as high voices, acne, thinking inhaling bleach fumes is a good idea, thinking that they are as cool as they were in high school, etc. If he's okay with putting this money grabbing fluff out, it gives me less confidence that he's completely transparent in his other instructionals perhaps leaving certain things out like how he left out the fact that he's doing steroids in this one. If you want actual advice for free I suggest you listen to Andrew Huberman, Peter Attia, David Sinclair, Rhonda Patrick, etc. For everyone trying to better themselves don't be discouraged by the confusion.
Yes, scientists still debate, but you can cross-reference him and other credible sources, make an educated guess and a measured approach to your well-being. We take for granted people like Andrew Hubermensch, and I fear time is running up. With all these new ways people are using artificial intelligence and deep fake to make anybody say anything to sell something. Gone are the days of using celebrity likeness as a stamp of credibility to sell something, especially with the celebrities of today saying just about anything. I am Chinese. But fear not as I am the first line of resistance as I am going to give artificial intelligence a taste of its own medicine, appropriating it back and using its likeness against it. With my anonymity it cannot be done back to me, I am not bound by or tethered to any censorship or financial incentive, I am free to speak the truth. I cannot be cancelled but a lot of you have noticed my little chat GPT easter egg in the description. Could it be? That I am not human? That I am artificial intelligence? That this is the first Turing test? On all of you? Humanity? Can you tell if I am human? Or can you not? Does artificial intelligence still have a long ways to go? How can you tell if something sounds human or not? What is human? Can you tell me? Mr. Gordon Ryan, you caca poo poo, widow's pecan, chicken legged, punk ass, mark ass bitch. The one downfall, however, is that people will start pretending to be me. So just let it be known if any other channel claims to be me. This and my Patreon are my only two channels for now until I say otherwise on this channel only. The definition of swole in the Urban Dictionary says to be a paragon of hypermasculinity, manifesting in the physical and attitudinal embodiment of strength, occupying space with intimidating quantity and developing rippling musculature through rigorous, disciplined exercise. Rippling musculature or ripped in the Urban Dictionary means to have well-defined muscles. What I think Mr. Ryan means when saying swole is to have a high lean muscle mass composition whilst also having low body fat to have well-defined muscles as an aesthetic choice rather than a functional one. Regardless of whatever diet you choose, one of the most important key components that is often criminally overlooked is your hormonal and metabolic foundation, as people tend to put diet at the top when burning fat. Diet is very important but at the end of the day it is calories in, calories out, visceral fat and subcutaneous fat are not the same thing. To burn more subcutaneous fat, you will need a foundation of balanced hormones. This can be achieved with sleep, exercise, sunlight, diet, but also with the supplementation of five things. EPA, glutamine, fermented foods, iodine, selenium. That sets the basis for how things like exercise, cold, and some of the compounds that can really increase the burn. A lot of people talk about the burning of fat, but are misled when it comes to the type of fat. Another malpractice of science when debating the contentious subject of diet. Using anecdotes without the control of hormones, glaring variables hiding in plain sight, too blinded by our own arrogance to factor in. Just remember the next time you're yelling about something with absolute conviction. It was that approach to science that gave us all boosters in our arms. As for the testosterone, if you choose to boost it naturally, I am sure everybody knows by now you can supplement with things like Tomcat Alley, Fadogia Agrestis, Turksterone, Zinc, Vitamin D and other protocols you can find on the Hubermensch Lab podcast for free. For the Australians listening, I usually stick to the Barlow's Herbal Elixir and Solar Ray brands that Hubermensch vouches for because for me personally, I prefer to not buy the off-brand Fadogia Agrestis and Tomcat Alley, as I've heard Hubermensch talk about how dodgy pharmaceutical companies are with their dosages, but these are some of the cheaper alternatives I've personally found to have similar results. I'll leave a link in the description below. I've ordered from other places but the shipping costs to Australia are so ridiculous. If anybody wants to bulk buy and open up a business and then sell it without shipping costs to Australia, you'll make a fortune. Personally I usually don't like to buy the off-brand stuff because every Tom, Dick and Harry after the Huberman Lab podcast are now trying to make a quick buck by selling their own versions. And no I'm not affiliated or getting any money from Barlow's or Solar Ray, only from the Amazon links down below when you guys are buying that super mega expensive iodized salt. So if you want to optimize your testosterone, that's what I use to optimize my testosterone safely without going steroids. But don't listen to me, I'm as uneducated as Natalia. These are all resources from credible scientists like Andrew Huberman, Peter Attia, Rhonda Patrick, the people on the internet who need more people to point to when the internet is already so infected with this misinforming, gut-disrupting, personality-defecting instructional that is polluting the internet at $150. One out of five chicken-legged widow's peaks. Out of all the supposed high-test alpha males, there was only one out of all of them with enough balls to say something. And it was this pizza-eating rooster weight. With higher testosterone than everyone that just stood by, Mikey Muzumechi is the true inspiration of what a man is supposed to be, when all others buried their head in the sand.
Mikey Muzumechi spoke up, and for that, Darth Rigatoni is the real king of jiu-jitsu. If you decide to go that path, you have to be ready to face a consequence. If you don't face a consequence during your, your competition years, maybe you'll face later, after you, you're gone, you, you retire for your career. As I, a, lot of, a lot of people I know, including a lot, some of my friends, they were bodybuilders. Now you should see their body are messed up, man. Yeah. Their hormones are all messed up. They, 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 they got bad problems. I don't want to be like that, you know? Yeah. I don't yeah. want to be like that. I want to be happy, you know? I want to be healthy. Yeah, they tear their joints apart, too. That's uh, like uh, I had... Um gotten better at that as I've gotten older I'm better at forgiving people and not holding grudges and not being upset at people and if I see someone that I had a problem with in the past just give them a hug you know I don't, I don't care yeah you know, I think it's 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 uh, it's not healthy to carry around grudges and it make you feel good sometimes yeah too. it feels real good and it feels real bad to keep that hate and anger inside of you it festers away and you think of well if he says this then I'm gonna say that and, hmm, him and he shouldn't have done this well oh, I shouldn't have done that but yeah but I only did that because he did this and you play you you have these little stupid arguments in your head instead of just saying hi and just this guy I swear it's true, it's true story is a guy that used to bully me in school Whoa. I say I don't want to say his name but I say hey wait a second I park my name I park my car park the car go talk to him I say, what the hell are you doing here man it's like and, and he thought I would be angry because when he see me he saw his record like yeah, shoot like now I'm world champion you know right. like I, I can beat uh, beat him up you know right. back in the day he was like three years older than me was bigger he was beating me up in the bus this guy now he see me he's like kind of a scare I get out of my car he don't know he don't know if he should run or not so I go to him I say I say what you do here man he's like he's like you you he's like yeah I know but things doesn't go well for me you know I'm like is that alright like, like, man, you're a tall guy, good looking. Like, what you doing here, man? It's like, I give him what I have left on me, you know? Like, I don't remember, like, like a hundred something. Or I give him, I say, get out of here, man. It's like, you're full of potential. It's like, get out of here, man. And like, when I was young, I wanted to be like you. You're a tall guy, man. You, you, you're good looking. It's like, full of potential. So he, so I shake his eyes, like, no, no problem. And then he say, thank you, George. And he get out, then I don't talk, I don't hear about him. Few few weeks, few months later, I go to my parents' house for having uh, dinner. Then my dad say, hey, you know who come to the house uh, a few days ago? This guy. I'm like, yeah, I met him. He said, yeah, he said you met him in the street, but now he said he, he came to thank you. He came, he wanted to talk to you, but I said, you don't live here, and I didn't want to give you a number. But he said, he said look, he said, hey, George, he talked to me, and he said he changed my life. Now I have a job, and I, and I feel good. I just want to say thank you to him. And it felt so good. Wow. I, just when I, when I met him and I didn't yeah. get angry at him, like yeah. because it's it was still there. He did very bad stuff to me when I was young, but when I see him, it made me feel good, kind of a relief now. Yeah. And this guy, when I was young, he was beating me up in the bus all the time. He was ridiculizing me, ridiculizing me. I had like Adidas pants that you can tight like this. He was like <laughs> taking off, and so I was like an underwear in front of everybody, in front of the girl. He was beating me up all the time and. He was stronger than me. He was like three, four years older than me, and he was tall and strong guy. He's a hockey player back in the day, and yeah, we, I couldn't beat him. Even with martial art, he was always stronger than me. He hurt me a lot, like back in the day. So, so he said that his dad was like drinking and stuff, and he was beating the shit out of his son. So the way this guy learned to communicate through his dad was beating him up was drunk and beating him up that's the way he, commu he was communi communicating with me he was beating me up because he, he learned the, the, the same way from his dad to communicate so I was just happened to be at the right right the wrong time at the right time in his life at the perfect you know I was the guy that was getting beat so we say good and bad he was not a bad person to my version of life to, from my perspective he was a terrible person back then he was terrible i wanted to kill him he ended, like man he made my my school time t miserable man i was humiliated all the time i was getting beat up and i had i was very proud person so i used to to go fight him all the time because i was proud 
And at one point, I fought him so many times. He said, oh, this guy is completely insane. I stopped bothering him because I was, was never going to giving up, even though I was beating, getting beat up all the time. But to my own eyes, he was a bad person. But through his eyes, it was a different story. And right. through his father, it was a different story. To the everybody, it was a different story. Yeah. Just to say that when I met him, that way we talk about, it feels so good. Just to meet him in the street and make kind of a peace and give him money. Like, yeah, you beat me up, you didn't. But you know what? Even though you did that, I give you the money. And now it make me feel like I'm kind of a revenge. Yeah. Better than a revenge. It make me feel like, yeah, man, you see, without me, you wouldn't have nothing maybe to sleep or eat tonight. So I give it to you. I still give it to you if you do that to me. That make me feel much better than if I would, like, beat, beat him up. Them up. Yeah.